welcome to Rockefeller's Barbershop. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will be blessed and be glad in Him. Today I want to introduce myself. My name is Rico Rodriguez at Rockefeller's Barbershop here in San Antonio, Texas, 1733 Babcock Road. My phone number is 210-782-5188. Come out and get your haircut here at Rockefeller's Barbershop. You are listening to I Am Refocused Podcast on iHeartRadio. You are listening to Refocused Magazine Podcast with your host, Shamaya Reed. This podcast is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. Now let's tune in to today's podcast. Hey guys, this is I Am Focus Podcast. Today is a great day. We have the one and only Miss Evelyn Tubbs, and she is our guest today, and she's the owner of the Veterans Toolbox. Today you're going to learn all about this company, and let's just start off from the jump. Can you tell us why did you start the Veterans Toolbox and just tell us about it? Sure. Well, my husband is retired Air Force, um, and he served in, throughout our history of the military, we saw how difficult it was to get a VA loan. Mm -hmm. Um, We met a lot of friends and family, too, that thought, you know, would go to the VA, it'd be easy, but the VA guarantees the loan, so you still have to go find a lender and a realtor, and you've got to work with the real estate industry, and that's not as easy as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Though, um, I decided, then my husband decided that we would have a passion to helping our veterans get into homes. And so that's where it all stemmed from, our own experience. And say someone is listening, local San Antonio, do they have to be local San Antonio to have these services, or can they be no, outside? No, as long as you've served in the military um, 90 days or more, mm-hmm. you are qualified for a VA loan. So what's the first step? Say I'm looking into this, I'm doing my research. What's the first thing I need to do? First thing you need to do is speak to the lender mm-hmm. because you want to be pre-qualified. And in order to be pre- pre-qualified, you have to have what everybody calls a COE. It's a Certificate of Eligibility. Mm-hmm. And you have to have your DD-214. Now, with the Certificate of Eligibility, a lot of veterans won't have that handy. They do hang on to their DD-214, but don't worry. A lender can, uh, they have a portal to pull that for you immediately. And if you don't have your DD-214, years ago, it used to take weeks for you to get it. Um, We purchased our home not too long ago, and obviously we were the ones that couldn't find our DD-214. And uh, it took us about seven days to get it. We ordered it online, and um, yeah, we got it about within seven days. So with modern technology, it doesn't take as long anymore. So when they're looking for a home... And you help them out with credit repair and mm-hmm. home loan. What's what's that process? So when you come to me and um, you say, you know, I don't have a credit score that's going to help. I mean, the credit score really depends on the lender. They mm-hmm. set that criteria. But the higher your credit score, obviously, the better your interest rate. So my focus is helping them get to the best credit score possible. So when they come to me, I, the Veteran Toolbox, has teamed with a company. It's a nationwide company called Financial Education Services. Mm -hmm. And so I continue with my passion for education. I train them. What, what all it takes to raise your credit score, what uh, what the credit bureaus are all about, because sometimes they're like, you know, the, the, the people behind the curtain that you just never get to see or talk to. <laughs> so I break it down for them. I help them understand the process of getting their credit score up. Um, and it's a whole portal of education for them. And so once I get them enrolled in that system, then I start to work with them and uh, and their lender mm-hmm. and their realtor. So it's very important that veterans understand all the ins and outs of their VA loan benefits mm-hmm. because there's allowables, there's non-allowables, mm-hmm. there's an origination, and then you do pay for certain things. If a lender doesn't charge origination, then there's non-allowables that you know you, you shouldn't have to. So there's just a lot of ins and outs, but I always recommend that uh, my veterans work with a um, a VA loan specialist um, in, in lenders. And because I do come from the mortgage industry, mm-hmm. I do work with a lot of different lenders throughout the city. And um, and I'm, I'm very capable of connecting them so that, um, you know, they're working with somebody that knows the ins and outs. And say they are going through the process and they're in it now. 
do you guys just kind of walk with them as far as if they have any other questions, if something pops up, or what would you do if uh, someone's in a situation where the credit is not as good as they would like it to be? Well, if their credit is not as good, and the majority of lenders start their credit at 580. Mm-hmm. Okay, if their credit is below five eighty, I would do I'll do a personal consultation with them, mm-hmm. and I can pretty much tell in the experience that I have now with seeing different credit profiles um, what all is involved. What's it going to take? Now, for instance, if they don't have a foreclosure, these are serious things. They don't have a foreclosure. They don't have bankruptcy. They don't have repossession in the last year. Um, You know, those are serious uh, bankruptcies. All of those have uh, statute of limitations. They have to go through before it's released. If they don't have any of that, and and this is during the interview when I talk to them, then I tell them, look, three to six months, we can have your credit score where you need to be. Wow. So you literally give them a toolbox to hold and go through all these resources. Mm-hmm, absolutely. There's other things you do too, right? Yeah. So name some other things that is involved in this Veterans Toolbox. So the Veterans Toolbox also gives back to our community. Mm-hmm. Um, I've partnered with the Veterans Association of Real Estate Professionals. I'm their education director. So with that organization, I partner with them and I bring in guest speakers once a month. Mm-hmm. And um, recently we just went to D.C. I lobby Congress and I asked that we all go and we lobby them to change the um, loan application because initially mm-hmm. the ten, it's called a 1003. Mm-hmm. Um, loan application is, is a nationwide and it's, it, it's rarely changed or updated. Well, because VA rep has been going to D.C. and lobbying for veterans, they were able to um, put in a box that says, have you served? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that was great. But there still weren't, um, there wasn't a way to calculate how many veterans were really using their VA loan Mm -hmm. benefit. Mm -hmm. So they did a study, and the study showed that out of 22 million veterans, only 10% were using their VA loan benefit. Wow. Is it because they don't know or they're not comfortable going through the process? They didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. The lender didn't tell them about it. Wow. Sometimes they were discouraged from using their VA loan benefit because it is a lot of red tape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. And um, sometimes it was um, that they just discouraged them from using their VA loan benefit. So now with this form, it does ask if you've served. And so now the form is also going to say, um, now because it says, have you served? Now we're going to be able to calculate how many veterans are and why aren't they using their VA loan benefit. So with VA rep, I'm very, very active with making sure that uh, we do the most for our veterans. Um, I participated recently in... um, um, reeks across America. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is part of the community outreach that I go for um, to show our appreciation. And um, and then recently, which I'm really proud of, is I had a television show that was broadcasted. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be one, once a quarter, and it's through PBS. Awesome. And um, nice. what I do in that television show is I interview all nonprofits that offer resources to veterans. And um, this gives everybody a chance to see it. It airs every Sunday at 1030. And uh, my first guest were um, VA rep, of course, because that's my passion. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also neighborhood housing services, because what they do is they give down payment assistance. Mm-hmm. And they do help veterans with up to $20,000. Obviously, VA loans don't take a down payment, mm-hmm. but it does help them with their closing costs. Mm-hmm. So I've done that um, and it's just been a real, um, it's been a fun ride. Mm-hmm. You know, my goal is to educate. My goal is to train. My husband being a recruiter for 20-something years, he's my coach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so wow. he teaches me how to handle different personalities. Um, coming from my background in forensics, mm-hmm. which Forensics is in the counting, not with bodies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every time I tell people I have my background is forensic, oh, it's bodies? Right. It's not like the show. <laughs> <laughs> so with forensic and accounting, you know, I've learned to be a technical reader, and so I can read and dissect what I'm reading. So now my husband has, t- has taught me, and we've been working together, how mm-hmm. to read and understand personalities. Because that's exactly what he did as a recruiter. And how how has reaction have you noticed when people, you know, I'm sure they're relieved, for sure, when they get your services. Do you have a success story you 
that comes to mind? Yeah, actually several. Mm-hmm. Um, I had this one gentleman that um, you know he was ready to buy a home, and we started working with him. And um, then it turned out he had some dings in his credit score. Mm-hmm. So I worked with him, and it took him about three months. But I always tell people, if you're ready, I tell my veterans and in general, even the consumers, if you're ready to purchase a home, start six months ahead of time. Because there will be some bumps in the road. Not, you know, we don't live in a perfect world. Mm-hmm. So it'll start six months in advance. And so this young family was able to move into a home. Um, I have another friend of mine. They all become my friends. <laughs> um, and family, almost. Um, it took her six months. She was living with her mother, and she kept saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I said, no, come on, Tammy, you can do it, you can mm-hmm. do it. I said, look, you're already three months into it. Look, your score's already changed. And, um, you know, she had a lot of concerns and you, when you live with parents and you have a family, it's like, can I get out now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, literally in six months, she was able to purchase a new Dr. Horton home. So, now, how does this or can it work for a homeless veteran who's been homeless for a while? Mm-hmm. So, for a homeless, how can they benefit? Well, what same thing? We would go through the same criteria. Um, if they have an income, mm-hmm. if they have uh, any type of retirement, mm-hmm. their loan is based on the amount of the retirement that mm-hmm. they're getting. So that is basically their income. Okay. Yeah, and then, then every lender would work specifically mm-hmm. with each individual. Um, and if we can't get them into a home, mm-hmm. lenders that I've worked with, mm-hmm. they can't get them into the home, then they can come talk to us okay. because we have different resources throughout mm-hmm. the city that can help them out and, and put them somewhere comfortable mm-hmm. so that they're not homeless because that mm-hmm. primarily is our goal. Right. So if we can't get them into mm-hmm. a home today to purchase, mm-hmm. we will get them into a home to be okay. warm. Yeah. And when... You have these clients come into you. How many percentage wise do you think is first time buying home or? Yeah, quite a bit of them are first buyers. And actually, mm-hmm. just to kind of re- understand the first time home buyer, if in the uh, mortgage industry, if you haven't owned a home in the last three years, mm-hmm. you're considered a first time okay. home buyer. Okay. So, you know, but even if you are a first time home buyer, like you've never bought a home, um, I offer first time home buyer classes. I partner with different um, realtors and lenders um, and organizations, for instance, Neighborhood Housing Services, um, and we offer first-time home buyer mm-hmm. classes. And what that consists of is you get someone from every platform that you're going to need when you're buying a home. You need a lender. Mm-hmm. You need a realtor. You need a home inspector. You need mm-hmm. an appraiser. You'll need um, insurance. Mm-hmm. So these are the things that, you know, the recipe is there. Mm-hmm. And so we bring the the, spe- the specialist in to come and tell the first-time home buyer, tell them about mm-hmm. property taxes, you know, tell them about home ownership, talk to them about um, home warranty, which is so important. Mm-hmm. Talk to the realtor, we'll talk about a 10-day option period because some veterans are like, and even consumers, if I buy a house, mm-hmm. am I going to lose my money if I decide I don't like it? Mm-hmm. So the education part comes in where we start telling them this is you have a 10 day option and make sure that your realtor talks to you about that. So um, there's a lot of information that goes into a first time home buyer class, but it's very informative. Even if you haven't owned a home in the last three years because the industry industry changes so much. Mm-hmm. Now I understand, like in your personal life, you you like horses. I do. <laughs> and I also understand that. You and your husband do therapy veterans. Can we you touch on that? Do, a bit? Yeah. So my husband grew up in in East Texas. I think it was East Texas. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere around there. Somewhere, yeah. He grew up on like a ranch, okay? Mm-hmm. So here we are. He grew up on a ranch. I grew up in California. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I grew up on sidewalks. He wow. grew up on grass. <laughs> and we happened to, you know, come together. The Lord just put us together because I love being outside. Love it. I grew up with two brothers, so I love being outside. And um, when we first met, um, he said he had a horse. And I said, great. You know, he asked me if I wanted to ride, go riding. And it was the most amazing feeling ever to be on this 1,200-pound animal mm-hmm. that was not moving if I until I was comfortable, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, I realized then that this horse Ben knew the, the how you felt, mm-hmm. and um, so 
we decided to buy more horses and so now we have our ranch and we extend our our horses we have a quarter horse and a Tennessee Walker mm-hmm. and we extend that to our veterans because when they come and ride our horses it's a piece that they're on this 1200 pound animal that's not going to take off and it trusts them Mm -hmm. and they trust the horse and um, so we do that on a regular basis every sunday we call it sunday fun day and uh, you know put it on facebook if you you know if you want to come ride your horses we have put our three-year-old granddaughter on our horse Mm. and our 85 year old uh, mother-in-law so our horses are that tamed and uh, so when you know when veterans come and um, you know they're reluctant at first of course but Mike is so good at uh, Mike, my husband, he's so good at talking to you, mm-hmm. training you, telling you what to expect. And he's been there, too. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, and he's been there. So he knows what it's like to, to get on some on a horse and, and have that fear. But yet, you know, you're a veteran, mm-hmm. and so, you, mm-hmm. you know, you, let's you know, suck it up. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not really that way because once you're on the horse, you feel you feel the warmth of the horse. And literally, you know, the horse is a warm body, but um, our horses are so tamed that, you know, when veterans come. And so the last two years, we have hosted um, uh, soldiers for Thanksgiving that don't have family here. Mm -hmm. And um, last year and this year again, and actually tomorrow I'm going to their graduation. Oh, wow. Nice. Over at Lackland. Mm -hmm. Um, Their families are coming in, so it's fun. I'm going to get to meet these families. Mm -hmm. Um, But they come, and they get on the horse, and some of them have never even seen a horse in real life. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it was such an experience for them, and they went back and told everybody, what you guys do? Well, let me tell you what we did. <laughs> Quick question. Is this part of the toolbox, or is it separate? No, it's, it's part, part of part the toolbox. toolbox. Yeah, we mm-hmm. always t- we bring them all over, and we, we tell them, you know, that this is our passion to make sure that not only veterans feel at home when they're away from home, mm-hmm. but also they, they take the tools because they're young. I like it. Take the tools with you, because if you think of it as a tool, you'll always have it with you. Mm-hmm. So you hear that, guys? You're not only getting two bots, you get to meet a horse as well. <laughs> How? All right, say someone knows someone, family member, who really benefit from this. How can they get in contact with you guys as far as to set up, set up an appointment with the horses? Yeah, well, my Facebook is public. Mm-hmm. Because of all the marketing that I do, all the service that I give to the community, I feel like everybody should know what my life is like it's you know definitely family and horses and giving back and education and training so my facebook is public and you can find me evelyn taurus tubbs mm-hmm. i'm very easy to find um my cell phone is all over the place um uh, you can text me i can call you guys okay. <laughs> and we'll definitely you guys get a hold of me folks magazine.com yeah. we'll definitely point you in the right direction I'm looking at your bio. I, I, I wrote down a condensed note cheat sheet. <laughs> condensed. And it's very loaded. I mean, <laughs> recruiting, training, marketing, public speaker, real estate. How do you not get tired? <laughs> you know, it's so funny. that People always say, you know, you're always on the go. You're always on the go. But you, there is at least one day a week that I work from home and I don't ever get out of my jammies. Mm-hmm. And, and I make sure there's one day for that. And then Sunday is my family day. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Sunday is fun day, and you're welcome to join my family. Nice. Okay. And then Saturday is our refocus day for me and Mike. Oh, we just, I like that. We just had her. <laughs> yeah, right. Didn't even think about that. <laughs> we just had um, my mother-in-law move in with us. She's 85. Uh, my father-in-law, God rest his soul, he passed away last year. Mm, sorry. They were, know. thank you. He, they were married 65 years. Whoa. Wow. And um, she, you know, obviously when you lose your best friend after mm-hmm. those many years, it's hard to find yourself alone. Mm-hmm. So she moved in with us. And, um, and uh, now that we have her, it, it's nice to care mm-hmm. for somebody. Yeah. And so Saturdays, we kind of refocus our, our life. Mm-hmm. Uh, we refocus on, you know, what can we do to give her uh, uh, something to look forward mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I do have a lot of time, believe it or not. I do. I, I, you know, of course, I live in Seguin. So I plan my day and my week, mm-hmm. rather, mm-hmm. to be in San Antonio. 
And so when I'm in San Antonio, I'm all over 1604, 10, and, and mm-hmm. it's a whole day that I'm in, the, in I would say in town, I sound like I live mm-hmm. in another state. Mm-hmm. But you just have to be so organized with your time mm-hmm. because time is such a valuable thing. You can't speed it up and you can't slow, slow it down. It, right. So you have to manage your time, and it takes organization mm-hmm. and my husband says that I'm super organized so I can't find a matching pair of socks but he says I'm organized <laughs> I mean, you got shoes covering the socks so I guess <laughs> that's what I say you know. I mean you're actually doing this for those veterans too when they're coming to you guys for your services mm-hmm. I'm sure you're teaching them how to be organized and yeah. how to break some probably bad habits that they might bring with them. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the things that you had to do for a veteran who might have some bad habits when they first came? When they came to visit us? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, a lot, they don't really have bad habits. It's just a a, a way of life, Mm -hmm. okay? And, of course, everybody's way of life is different. They have Mm -hmm. different cultures, Mm -hmm. different thinking, different mannerism. Mm -hmm. What I like to focus in on is showing them a different way. Nice. It's not okay. going to be, it's not going to be better. It's not going to be worse. But I'm going to show them a different way, mm-hmm. and the different way is our way. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you don't have to do things my way. But if they're all extremely much younger than mm-hmm. us, so we have a lot of experience. Our whole family is Air Force. So mm-hmm. this last Thanksgiving, I had my daughter-in-law, my son-in-law. Uh, my husband, my brother-in-law, they're all Air Force. Mm-hmm. And there are my, my son-in-law is still active military. Mm-hmm. But these young men were, I don't even think they were older than 21. Mm. Wow. So they sat there and, and, and listened to mm-hmm. everything that, that, you know, my family was talking to them about. And they themselves leave with such a gratefulness telling us that, you know, they learned a lot. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily we're trying to teach them but we're just exposing them to what we've been through Mm -hmm. and um, and giving them an option yeah and then Mm -hmm. we tell them you know and and of course my husband retired out of the air force he he tells them you know these are the tools that you can use these this is the path that you can take this is what my son did Mm -hmm. and uh and i'm proud to say that my my stepdaughter now is um as I recruit, at recruiter this morning, she's entering the Air Force. Oh, wow. Man, you guys are some heavy hitters. <laughs> what, yeah. How does it feel, though, to also everyone know San Antonio as AKA Military City? So, how does that feel to know that there's a whole community that really backs up yeah, this whole military city? It's a great feeling because you're never alone. Mm-hmm. You know, our city is a great city in that mm-hmm. we come together. There are so many resources in San Antonio. For veterans, which is why I decided that I was going to try to condense them all. Mm -hmm. You know, you come here, you come here, you come here, Mm -hmm. and let's find one place for them. But when it comes to the real estate industry, there's there's so many realtors that want to help, and they just don't know how to help. So that's where I come into play. But the city backs me up so much. Um, I mean, I I don't know if I told you... in, in our magazine, if, if I had already received that award from the, the sport, uh, Spurs Sports and Entertainment. Okay. Oh, okay. They, um, it was a prize to me. That's a funny story. Can mm-hmm. I tell you? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so they reached out to me in, they, in an email and said, we'd like you to come visit with us. And I thought, it, it was the NBA, uh, what, the Women's National. The WNBA. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, they're going to want me to sell tickets. I don't know anything about basketball. <laughs> Nothing about basketball. <laughs> And so I kind of, you know, I said, oh, I'll get back to them. Well, then she emailed me again and said, hey, we really would like to talk to you. So I told my husband, well, I guess I better go. It's very hard for me to tell people no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I went and I sat and um, I'm, the whole time I'm thinking, she wants me to sell basketball tickets. I just know she wants me to sell basketball <laughs> tickets. And um, she started asking me about my past and what made me who I was and how did I get here. And I'm very open with my past, as I discussed in, in the magazine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It has made me who I am. And so I, you know, I've re- freely told her my story. And uh, at the end of the interview with her, she says, well, you're exactly what we're looking for. I said, to sell basketball t- tickets? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, no, this has nothing to do with basketball tickets. I was like, oh, okay, well, what is this about then? They were looking for, uh, they had partnered with Frostbank, and they were looking for uh, Inspiring Woman of the Year. Hmm. 
And when she told me that, I thought, oh, well, okay, I guess yeah. I should have returned your email. <laughs> <laughs> And um, sure enough, you know, you know, they went through their whole process. She said, "Can we nominate you?" I said, "Yeah, that'd be great." And uh, and I did. I was nominated, and then I was elected as Inspiring Woman of the Year. Wow! Wow! Congratulations! So, congratulations! And I, you know, it made me feel good because a lot mm-hmm. of my work was giving back to the community, and a lot of my work was giving back to our veterans. And so I, it's a passion for me, and um, you know, I, I do it without even thinking about it. It's a natural form for me. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And the way you operate your business, it seems very relaxed. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can I can catch that. Yeah. That <laughs> what would you tell any business out there who's the opposite maybe? You know, it's holiday season, a lot yeah. of businesses are readjusting their game plan for the new year. What would you tell any business out there who's listening? Maybe they are catered to the veterans as well. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give them to if they're not feeling relaxed or they're struggling with numbers or whatever? You know, there's always going to be challenges. Always. Every day is a challenge. But, it, you know, I always say you have to refocus yourself almost once a week Mm -hmm. because things change in a week. Mm -hmm. Last week, we were all healthy. This week, my mother-in-law was ill. Mm -hmm. You have to refocus. You have to readjust, and you have to work through the adversities Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because every day is a challenge. Every day. And nothing's the same. And so if you constantly wake up thinking, time is on my side, I'm going to organize my time because I can't make it move faster or slower. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have obstacles. We're going to get through them because tomorrow is going to be a better day. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the same day as today, tomorrow will be better. You know why? Because the Lord woke you up and let you take another breath and take that step and then take advantage of that to pass it on to somebody else. That's good. That's good. And. It's like the business is a reflection of you because yes. you're also talking about your personal mm-hmm. life as well. And your personal life does get into the business life. Yeah, yeah. And so to the personal side, you touched on it, but touch on it again for just individuals. You know, they're working 9 to 5, you know, during the holidays. Maybe some of them stressed out. What some advice would you tell them as well as they go to work and keep the grind going? Be thankful. Hmm. Be thankful every day. There are people, you you know, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm so unmotivated. (laughs) Why am I so unmotivated? I don't know. And, uh, you know, I start thinking about people that I know that I'm praying for. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm praying for my mother-in-law's health, praying for my mom's health, but I'm grateful they're with me. Praying for my friends that are having adversity. Mm -hmm. I wish I could take it from them, but I'm not. I'm not walking their shoes. You know, you look around and you will see that you have blessings that you're not even looking at. They're, they're, it's, it's, a, it's a way of life, mm-hmm. but your way of life is, is a blessing. And when you go out every day, you can come across somebody who pretends to look like they have no issues. Mm-hmm. And if you just touch them, you'd be surprised the the warmth that they feel. And, you know, tell them, I hope you have a great day. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter where you mm-hmm. are, if you are paying compliments and being visual of what Did you're you say saying. pay and compliments? <laughs> paying. <laughs> that's an that's, that's interesting statement because that is true. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, because what you get out is what you put in. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to have that positiveness because it's electrifying. Mm-hmm. You know, smile. My, my father-in-law used to say, smile, it doesn't cost you anything. Nice. And yet it can bring such benefits to the person mm-hmm. you're smiling at. That's true. So every day is a challenge, no matter who you are, because we don't live in a perfect world. But the That's Lord right. gives you the way to, to get out of that if you just open up your heart and your mind and say, you know, like I say, Lord, why am I so unmotivated? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, don't take yourself so serious because life is not serious. If, you're, if you take yourself so serious, you're going to be so stressed out every day. Mm-hmm. And there's things that you can control mm-hmm. and there are things you have no control of. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you have to be able to say, I don't have any control of it. Then I got to put it in God's hands mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I can't change it. 
You can't change what you don't have control of. That's true. That's true. And because of the horrific experience and tragedies that I've gone through, mm-hmm. that has been the toughest lesson for me. Mm. But I was able to get past it. Yes. And I am so at peace with it. I'm at peace with myself. I'm at peace with the tragedies. And I feel like all the refocusing that I do is a daily a daily exertion. You have to put into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you tell us a little bit about your faith and how that plays a role with your business. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of people feel like they got to keep it separate. You know? Oh, no. How do you balance faith and business, dealing with clients and still living the life that you live? Well, you know, everybody you, t- you talk to, everybody I speak to, they know that I love the Lord. I, they know that I have a Christian mm-hmm. background. I'm not going to push it on you. Right. But when you're suffering and I come to you and I tell you, look, I'm going to pray because I think that there's nothing that I can do. Mm-hmm. And obviously you're, you feel like you're in a situation that it's not going your way, but we can throw it in God's mm-hmm. hands. And, you know, if you don't mind, we'll just, you know, and I don't do it formally. Sometimes some people don't want to, you know, right. be formal, but you don't have to be formal because mm-hmm. God is your father. Mm-hmm. All he wants you to do is have a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. So my father is in heaven and I speak to him. I said, Dad, man, you wouldn't believe what happened today. <laughs> I'm so glad you saw that. <laughs> but if you treat your heavenly father exactly like your personal father that he gave you here on earth, you always have somebody there listening to you. Hmm. And so that faith is is what you exercise every day. You have faith you're going to wake up tomorrow. You have faith you're going to get up and go to work. You have faith that the sun's going to come up. So those are things that the Lord gave you to have faith in. And if you just grab on to the things that are beyond you, then you're, you, you can find that balance. But none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. Right. We're all going to suffer. Um, I deal with so many veterans that have PTSD. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, I suffer from that as well. Mm-hmm. So it's a matter of just being aware. Be aware of the people you're talking with. Don't just talk to them. Listen to what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they tell you more about their business. Sometimes I'm like a therapist. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> but being a good listener, having that faith to give back to them, not answering their questions, not correcting their problems, right? but giving from your heart. And your heart is what you can use to listen to these people, uh, to listen to those that have that are going through adversity, that are struggling through times, um, that are feeling lonely. But um, it's all about a daily perseverance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty good. A daily, not a yearly. No, no. It's not once a year. No, it's a daily perseverance because we all don't get up on the right side of the bed. <laughs> I know, I know. Right? <laughs> I, I know, I, I can say that for sure. Now, when it comes to veterans and just individuals that you have come across throughout the years, those who have lost faith and you can kind of sense that, mm-hmm. what are some of the things you have told them to kind of get them back on track? I tell them my story. Hmm. I tell them my story and I tell them it took me 30 years. Mm-hmm. Don't take 30, don't lose 30 years of your life. And, it, and you know my story is not an easy story. Right. It was not an easy thing to go through. Um, but it was mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody else who was struggling, that's theirs. Mm-hmm. And it may not be as tragic as mine. Mm-hmm. But I tell them, but that's yours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I try to encourage them to look to tomorrow. Don't look any further, just look to tomorrow. Just try to focus on tomorrow. So I would keep telling people, you got to refocus. Because yeah. every day has a way of making you feel like, oh, dreading tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, Christmas is coming, the expenses. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I haven't done Christmas shopping. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that does happen. A lot of people, they, they're so much worried about, you know, five years, ten years from now. But they're not actually goals. They're just worries. Yeah. yeah and it's it a big just, difference when you mm-hmm. have worries versus goals. Yeah. So, what I, you know, I t- like I told my, my stepdaughter, I said, joining the Air Force is not a lifetime for you. Mm-hmm. Let's look at it at the time that you're going to go in. And in three to five years, you refocus. 
And for now, let's just take those steps toward progression. Be, be moving forward. And by me moving forward, you're mm-hmm. always thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow's right. going to be better because I'm going to be focused. I'm going to be I'm gonna persevere mm-hmm. no matter what. And um, at least I'm moving forward. I heard someone put it, you know, the whole saying, the grass is green on the other side of the fence. Yeah. I heard someone say, check the water bill next door. That's right. Because you don't know what they're doing to get that green grass. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those, like, eat what's on your plate first. Yeah. So yeah. what's some of the things... Uh, as far as goals for um, your veterans toolbox for 2018, yeah, so goals for that. I have a lot of goals, and I take them one at a time. Um, if I if I put them on my on the shelf, you know, I pick them as they come because it's that's the focus of looking forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of, several of my goals are to continue helping veterans get into homes, helping consumers get into homes because I just don't work with veterans. Mm-hmm. I also help consumers as well. Helping people feel the value of life. Every day I want to help someone. If you, It's such a great feeling to be a homeowner. I yes. recently had a young couple, very young couple. They had been renting for like maybe 18 years. Ooh, long time. And um, I helped them. It took a year for them to get into their home. Mm-hmm. But her first statement was, it feels so good to get up and cook mm-hmm. breakfast in my own home. And sit and watch football game in our own home. Mm-hmm. So those goals are, you know, are immeasurable mm-hmm. to me. And so I want to continue giving back to our veterans, continue to help them un- use their VA loan benefits, understand them, mm-hmm. and continue to form these uh, connections with those within the city that are like-minded. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I sent you a website that I recently was asked to. Uh, put my services on uh, Joe Corwin and Associates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This guy, he's a retired Air Force, so like-minded. He believes in training. He believes in giving people a hand up. He believes in, you know, understanding all there is to understand about real estate. And uh, he has the same passion that I do for training mm-hmm. and education. So he invited me to be part of his website. And I thought that was such an wow. honor for me. Because, yeah. you know, you can... You can't just ask somebody to do that because websites, you know, they're not free. Right. And, uh, you know, I've known him for a few years, maybe like four or five years. Um, And so he invited me to be part of his website. And I thought that was really, really generous. And, you know, I thank the Lord that he opens these doors for me Mm -hmm. because uh, it just happens. It just happens. So those are the goals of growing the Veterans Toolbox, maybe growing, um, taking our horses out a little more. Even though we hardly have time to ride our horses because on Sunday we always have friends and, and you know, family over. We all show up. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, on the annual basis, we lead, we post the colors. We're the Grand Marshal for the New Braunfels Christmas Parade. Mm-hmm. So we just had that. Um, so, you know, we're just always on the go. If it's not with our horses, it's entertaining. If it's not entertaining, um, you know, it's giving back to the community. And so, so you have... A person, average consumer or veteran, who says, you know what, I do want to start planning for the new year to own a home for the first time. What's some of the action steps they can take right now before the year is over to set themselves up? Right now, you know, tax season is coming around, right? Mm-hmm. I always tell everyone, let's take a let's let's do a consultation. It's free; it doesn't cost anything, and I'm really fun to be around. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's look at your credit score. Let's let's you know review it. Um, let's start looking at your savings plan because getting your credit score is just one part of it. You have to have a down payment. You know, FHA requires, and there's no way around it, three and a half percent down. Okay, so if you let's look at your savings plan, let's look at your credit score, um, let's look at your closing costs, let's see, work, let's work with the lender and see how much home you can buy. So I work with them and I groom them because, like I said, coming from the mortgage industry, I kind of understand what they, how they need to look, mm-hmm. and. Um, and so once I get them all groomed and I get them feeling good, like, you know, yes, there's a check mark there. We passed that one. We passed that one. Mm-hmm. Then three to six months from now, you know, you are going to be in a new home. So starting in January, you know, sit down with me. Um, you, you will see everything I see. Mm-hmm. You know, when it comes to credit repair, I do much more than credit repair. Much, much more. Um, uh, it's just all about education. If I teach you, 
-hmm. how to not get in this situation again it's like the parable of Jesus he could have just given the he could have given you a fish but what did he do he taught you how to fish so with credit a lot of young people a lot of young veterans you know they get credit cards get a car and then all of a sudden they PCS and holy cow how are we going to pay all that we're not there anymore Mm -hmm. so I with the yeah, that's what I was, was going to tell you about. With uh, Freddie Mac, I was certified through Freddie Mac to teach military uh, financial literacy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so with that certification, I can help veterans when they're getting, uh, well, active military, when they're mm-hmm. getting ready to PCS, when they get want to buy a home. Freddie Mac sends me all the training material that I need. Nice. So I can help them get ready to PCS. Wow. So there's just a lot a lot of information but you know preparing to buy a home is a huge huge step because it's probably going to be the largest investment you ever make in your life Mm -hmm. and if you're young you want to buy just the right amount of house because you may start having children you may have horses you may have more dogs (laughs) you know changes everything changes and so you know, you, the first step is to look at your finance. And so what I like to say is that I teach financial fitness. Okay. That's a catchy phrase. Mm-hmm. Financial, that sounds like a mm-hmm. podcast if you ever want to <laughs> launch yeah. a podcast, financial fitness. I'll subscribe to that one. <laughs> um, what's some of the other things you have on your radar for 2018? Um, uh, again, we're going. I'm going to D.C. in June. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm looking forward to going up. We go to the hill every year. I'm looking at doing that. Um, I'm looking at having a little more uh, first-time home buyer classes or just home buyer classes mm-hmm. because you know a lot. Like I said, if you've already owned a home, I don't want someone to think, oh, it's not my first home. Mm-hmm. So I like to call it home buyer classes. Uh, we have housing summits coming up twice a year. Okay. Uh, I want to try to get on to uh, get the veterans to under- you know to come in and take advantage of that because with VA rep we have that twice a year and, and everything that you need as a veteran is there. So nice. you know I plan on, on building that up a little more, spreading my business over to Seguin and Nixon and uh, Scottsdale because that's over like. Um, outside of city limits mm-hmm. and so a lot of my services aren't out there nice. now you have this special letter I do not want to <laughs> take too much time because I want to make sure you have this time to say this special letter that you have for the veterans and after you say it can you kind of touch on what inspires you to write it okay do you want me to read it so? yeah so with my show, I always end the show with, with the Veterans Toolbox Prayer. Um, you know, they're always in our prayers, and we all never want to forget them. Mm-hmm. And so this is what I, I worked up. It says, we pay tribute to our veterans who gave a part of their life to preserve freedom. At the Veterans Toolbox, we commemorate your contribution on a deeper level because of our personal and business interactions. We consider you a living history book and a testament to the unforgettable strength of the human spirit. Your sacrifice prompts Americans everywhere to eradicate, resolve, and renew their efforts to reduce tension and promote peace in the world. Today and every day, we express our deepest gratitude for the sacrifice you made to protect and preserve our freedom. Your example of service and strength moves, touches, and inspires us. Please accept our immeasurable gratitude as we offer our highest tribute to you, a proud American veteran. You are in our hearts, our prayers, and in our minds for all times. And we want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, especially the veterans that are not home with their families. Yes. Man, that's a a great, that's just a great message in general. What what drives you? I mean, I, I got a feeling, but just for the listener, what really drives you? to wake up every day and do this? You know, I think it's just the love for people. Mm -hmm. I love people. I love to see people happy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's a passion for me to go out and reach and touch you and share Mm -hmm. the, you know, the benefits that I am reaping by being happy and having my relationship with my father. And every day I wake up and, and I think, I'm going to touch somebody today. I mean, even if it's just a smile, a touch, even, you know, telling someone, have a Merry Christmas. And it's just, I'm a people person. Mm-hmm. And I want people to be happy. 
and and I want to be all I want to do is participate in that. If I can give you, share a little bit of sprinkle dust on you. <laughs> I have to ask this question for sure. What does success mean to you? Success to me, I think what it means is being happy with myself. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not happy with yourself, you're not successful. That's good. And you have to be at peace with in my, I'm 58 years old, okay, and I am so proud that I'm not young anymore. <laughs> I told somebody the other day, being young was so much responsibility. Mm-hmm. At my age, I'm at peace with myself. Mm-hmm. I'm at peace with my past, and I'm at peace with my Lord mm-hmm. that has given me the ability to say, oh, okay, I may need to pass that. <laughs> so success is being at peace with yourself. Because you can't help somebody else if you're not at wow. peace with yourself. That's really good. That's so true. That's I like using you know visionary stuff you know in my head. It's like having a piece of puzzle that don't fit. Yeah. And just trying to force it to fit. Yeah. That makes total sense. What would you tell? Maybe a young person might be listening to this. We got we have a broad audience, so maybe it's a young person who aspires one day to go to college or be a business owner or just work a really nice corporate job, what some words will you tell them right now who feel like maybe they're frustrated, maybe no one's listening to them? Yeah. Be an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, you're making yourself, you're reinventing yourself, you're refocusing yourself every Mm -hmm. day. Be an entrepreneur. Think like an entrepreneur. Um, Look at every opportunity as an entrepreneurship because even pumping gas, you could be talking to somebody next door that you wouldn't even know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they needed your skills. That's true. That is true. So think outside your box every day. If you're going to college and you know you're you have a goal, stick with that goal, but always have a second goal. So college is great. Go for it. Mm-hmm. But think like an entrepreneur mm-hmm. because once you get out of college, you're going to have to use those skills. And you're going to have to spread them out. Mm-hmm. And so why not start spreading them out now? You just get it by a toolbox. That's Christmas. right. There's another so tool. <laughs> you all got Don't a nice free toolbox. gift right now. If you, if you did not pay attention, rewind the seconds because it's not analog. But we wind the seconds. And listen, that again, that second right there was pretty much like that was going. <laughs> that was a nice Christmas present because a lot of people don't get that. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are just kind of, they're just trying to keep up with everything, mm-hmm. technology, social media, and they almost get to the point where they're just overwhelmed. Yeah, and life they, seems to consume you sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's some of the things that you have seen veterans, I don't know how open they are, mm-hmm. as far as overcoming after the process, dealing with you guys, services? A lot of it is, uh, like I'm working with some families from the Fisher House, a lot of it is a change, Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, Change is not easy, Mm -hmm. and the only thing that stays the same is that everything changes. (laughs) I like that. (laughs) And uh, it's change, and so, you know, everybody has a different obstacle in their life. There's not one person that's the same as the other. And, like, I keep going back, if you just listen, you know, because you can be the same age, but if you listen to mm-hmm. that person's adversity, if you listen to that person's concern, if you listen to that person's challenges, you know, you're you're putting their life for a reason. It yes. was an accident that you were there listening to mm-hmm. them. So there's a purpose. Look at every opportunity, every presentation, every op- every person you speak to, look at it with a purpose. I'm going to listen to this person and I may not have the answer. But if I'm listening, all they need to do is speak. Sometimes just getting it off your chest. We've heard that our whole life. Mm -hmm. Just get it off your chest. A lot of people don't need to be fixed. They just need to Mm -hmm. be heard. Whoa. That's really good. I like that. I hope the listeners are listening. A lot of people don't need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. They just need to be heard. Yeah. That is so important. Yeah. That's... Man, that speaks volumes. I mean, I know why this bio is so long now, because it is huge. You definitely spend a lot of your life serving. Yes. 
because you can't really do any of this successful opportunities without having the desire to serve and actually taking the action to serve because it's so easy to say I want this but you won't earn it yeah and you have definitely put in some minutes yeah because I really like how you said earlier in the show you can't speed up time no and you can't slow down time but we can always watch the highlight reel yeah (laughs) and depending on the highlight reel that's when you're going to see what you did or did not do that's why not trying to get off track here, but sports, they're always watching film. Right. They're always studying film. And people listening. Instant replay. Study <laughs> your life, your film right now in life. If you're not liking those highlights, it's time to do something yeah. outside the box. Got to refocus. It's always about yes. refocusing because nothing stays mm-hmm. the same. And as far as just back to business again, because the podcast, too, it's not just people's life stories, but it's also giving people ideas, fresh ideas. How can they reinvent, reinvent themselves, so to speak, but also reinvent their business. So in 2018, everyone gets excited. We all have the faddish new year, new me. But something that can really stick to someone right now, business, entrepreneurs, they're all hungry, looking for new ideas. What's something that you feel they should know going into the new year? About me or in just business? Or just business. Some some things they need to set in the foundation or whatever. You definitely need to always look at your business plan. I think the biggest mistake that companies, a small companies do, because I've worked with the chamber with so many small growing Mm -hmm. companies, they didn't have a business plan because a business plan sounds like, oh my God, you know, I got to do this, do that, do that. And, and But a business plan can simply be where I am today, where I want to be tomorrow, and where I want to be in three to five years. Mm-hmm. And and don't wait till you have all your ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. Okay? Look at me. I have the Veterans Toolbox. I don't even have my website up yet. <laughs> okay? But that didn't stop me right. because it's the passion that you have for what you're doing. If you're starting a business, if you own a business, you have a passion for what you're doing. You mm-hmm. love what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So why wait for all the ducks to be in a row? Just mm-hmm. get up and go. Right. Every day, get up and go and knock things out as you need them to be knocked out. But do not stay in one place. Don't wait for your business plan to mm-hmm. be complete. Mm-hmm. A business plan is the name of your business and it's registered. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have a passion implement that passion into your business man mm. that's good it makes me think again uh <laughs> you know teams sports you know you have your teammates and then you have a coach yeah if you not coaching yourself to study new plays and new strategies then you're never going to get to the championship yeah. and, and there's, so, there's so many classes in in our industry mm-hmm. there's so many classes for a small business Mm -hmm. and a lot of them are free you know there's so much education out there you can Mm -hmm. never it's never a waste of time Mm -hmm. when you attend a class it's never Mm -hmm. because you should always you will most likely leave with something that you hadn't thought about and the nonprofits, going back to the veterans toolbox the nonprofits that you guys are involved with do you get involved with events as well? With oh, yeah. events, what some community events you guys have done? We've done um, throughout the year. Mm-hmm. We've done a lot of events in New Braunfels with at McKenna Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done events at uh, the Shrine Shriner mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. on sixteen oh four. We've gotten involved with um, the VA uh, when they have benefits for um, veterans, like at the Freeman Coliseum, mm-hmm. uh, the Bear County Conference. We're a part of that. Um, you know, we as a nonprofit with the nonprofits that I affiliate myself with, you know, they're all reaching out, and they and we're accepted. We're accepted very well in the community. And that goes back to the point I was making earlier of you making the time to serve. Yeah. And using your minutes well, because I really like that's that's another highlight reel <laughs> in this podcast. The whole thing about time. You can't slow it down. Yeah. And you can't speed it up. Yeah, sometimes and it's an enemy. <laughs> it def- time is definitely an enemy. Like, yeah. We're all running out of time. Yeah. We never gain any more time. We're always losing time. So that's why we need to redeem the time exactly. that we have. Use it. 
but what you were saying earlier with businesses, you know, revamping the business plan, that's perfect because if you know that you can't control time, right? But you can only control what you put in. Yeah, you can organize. That's maker. Mm-hmm. You have to organize what you put into the time. Organize your minutes. Yeah, yeah organize your mm-hmm. minutes. I feel like the gold phone, the old mm-hmm. school singular, <laughs> where you can't talk to you until after nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Is there anything in closing? Because we only got five minutes left. Time flies. You did. Uh, mm-hmm. What's some of the things you would like to say in closing that you definitely want the listener to know, whether it's business or personal? Yeah. I want everybody to remember that there are so many veterans that are not home. They're not home. They, you know, they're they're abroad. We have them here at Lackland, Fort mm-hmm. Sam, Randolph. We have them all around us. Take the time to give of yourself and to see what you can do to help them. There are a lot of veteran families that need more than what the military can give them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have something called VA Rep Cares where we collect at socks and sweaters. Things that we take for granted, you know, try to think outside the box on what can you give? What's in your closet? What aren't you using mm-hmm. anymore? Um, try to pay it forward. It's all about paying it forward. Mm-hmm. And our veterans have, some have given the ultimate prize. Some are, you know, struggling right now. I know my husband, when he first started, he had two jobs, military mm-hmm. job and out. he had a job outside. Mm-hmm. So... It's not an easy lifestyle for them, but yet they sacrifice it for our freedom. Mm -hmm. And if you're just thinking about that, be aware. Keep it at the top of your mind. Um, You know, be grateful. Thank them for their service. Uh, Thank the spouses. You know, they do. They're they're in in it as well. Mm -hmm. And as far as business is concerned, keep forward. Be refocusing every day. Try to reinvent yourself so that you can fit into the time because the way I run the business today wasn't the way I was running it 25 years ago. Hmm. So you always have to be up to date with what technology offers, what mm-hmm. you know, what are people looking for. Um, you know, But stick with your passion. That's where it starts. You won't go wrong. And life is business. It is. Like mm-hmm. all this stuff we're saying is pretty much, it can apply to your personal life as well, mm-hmm. being productive yeah. citizen. And if you manage your business the way you manage your relationship mm-hmm. with your family, with your creator, mm-hmm. just continue to manage. Manage your passion. Because even passion can get carried away. That's true. That's true. Wow. Man, time has flown. This is part of the fastest show because <laughs> it felt like we just sat down. Yeah. <laughs> but any shout outs you want to give? Shout outs? Mm hmm. Um, does that mean like. Oh, just give a shout out to me. Shout husband, out to or, Mike. Oh, you mean to stand up and woohoo? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, anybody want to yeah. give a shout out to Yeah. Them? A lot of people in the community have mm-hmm. really stepped up and helped me. Uh, they understand my passion, they appreciate it. And, you know, like I said, uh, Joe Corwin, graciousness from his on his side, having me on his website. Uh, Judy Goldick, she's with Real Regal Realty. She's posted videos over and over that, you know, I I'm her in-house credit repair and financial fitness person. Um, different lenders throughout the city that have, you know, agreed to send me their challenge clients and allow you know, trust me to work with them mm-hmm. and um, mostly my husband you know he supports my passion he believes in me we're like-minded and uh, he makes my life so 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 balanced and um, that's another thing you also I would recommend mm-hmm. find balance that's good mm-hmm. speaking of all of this great shout outs big major shout out to the owner mm-hmm. Rico Rodriguez there you know you San Antonio, you already know, Rockefeller's Barbershop right here in San Antonio. Make sure you come here, get your hair cut, whether you're flying in San Antonio or if you live here in San Antonio. Merry Christmas to everybody. You guys stay happy, stay focused, and most importantly, keep God first. God bless. Peace out.